Today I'm going to show you how to do a 1920s authentic finger wave on your own hair. It's by no means easy, this is certainly one for advanced users, but for those of you who've really wanted to know, I'll show you how today. For this look, we're working with clean but damp hair, not too wet. You'll need duckbill clips, the wider the better, to actually set these waves in. Then, you'll also need the small, flat pin curl clips. We'll be using our tail comb to separate out the sections that we need. And a long toothed comb in order to grab as much hair as possible. The styling gel I'm using has maximum hold, number four, but doesn't dry off too quickly. First, comb through the hair you want to use, making sure it's tangle free. We're going to add our styling product gradually as we work through this. You'll see I've worked the gel into my hands then into the front piece, which is the first section that I'll be waving and styling. I don't add product all over the hair to start with because it will dry off too quickly. Instead, we add more product as we go along. To show you the actual finger wave technique I'm using here, I'm going to show you in real time. We use our long comb and then starting with the front section, we make sure that we've combed that product through as well as possible. Then, taking the section that we first want to weigh, comb the hair flat and forward. You'll see how I actually use the directionality of the combing before then adding the weight and the pressure through the fingers. Now that I've combed this section flat and forward, you can see where I'm applying pressure with these fingers. Once I've pressed into the scalp, then slide the fingers slightly to give you the ridge. Keeping those fingers in place, flat and tight against the scalp, we now work the hair in the opposite direction with the comb. It's really important that we keep combing this so that all that hair is flat, giving us that beautiful S-bend when we finish. Don't relieve the pressure from those fingers or you will lose the S-bend. Holding that S-bend in place with the comb, I gently lift my hands and using the two fingers there in a pincer-like motion, you can see how they grip into that next ridge. The trick to getting this style right is patience and a firm grip because this is not an easy one to do. So basically we continue the same motion of moving the hair backwards and forwards with our patience, using the fingers for pressure and that pincer grip. It is a tricky one for me to film doing this on my own hair, but by letting you see this in real time, you'll see how I'm working through the process. Now that we have our full first S-bend wave in place, we need to clip that down to continue working on the hair because we don't quite have enough fingers on one hand to do it all, just with hands. So lifting your fingers carefully, use the duckbill clip on the underside of that S-wave. You can see how I insert that very close to the scalp here because you don't want to miss any of that wave. Now that that's in place, just make sure that you've tidied things up before holding that clip down and repeating the process with the comb until we've waved the whole front section.
completed that side, it's time to move on to waving the other side. This is a great side to feature if you have an asymmetrical part like I do, and move this section quite close down over the eye and the eyebrow. I've finished the feature wave on this side, I'm going to use the ends of the hair to do the little kiss curls using the pin curl clips. So make sure that these parts of your hair are thoroughly coated with product before ribboning them out and then creating a flat pin curl against the face for those lovely kiss curl features. completed those two kiss curls, we get to what may be the trickiest part of this entire process, trying to do your wave behind your own head. Thoroughly coat the hair with product, working that through. Then using your long toothed comb, you're going to need to basically work in braille to create that same S-bend behind your own head. This is quite tricky and you can see how even here I'm having a little bit of trouble with it. However, it is worth persevering because we want the back to look just as good as the front. See how patience and a good comb technique are quite necessary here because you're solely relying on touch and feel to get those end spans into place. I wanted to show you this in real time so that you can see, even when I do this on myself, it's certainly not something that is quick and easy, but it does make a great finish. So once you've put those S bends into place, you're also going to need to use your duckbill clips to hold those sections of S bend in place before we pin curl the rest. Now that you've overcome that challenge, we're going to fill the rest of the bottom of the hair with product and pin curl this. You'll see that I'm pin curling on my side here for another feature pin curl, similar to the kiss curl on the other side, before adding product and then 
pin curling the entire bottom section all the way around the head. It's really important that we keep these pin curl clips in for a long time to allow it to dry. And this is where your commitment to the style kicks in. You need to actually allow this to dry until it's completely dry, which for me meant that I had to go out and do some of my Christmas food shopping exactly like this. And so, several hours later, now that my curls are completely dry, I can remove these pin curl clips. So slowly and carefully, not breaking any of these waves or curls, gently slide the pin curl and duckbill clips out of the entire hair. we've removed all our pin curl clips, you'll see that the longer section at the back that we pin curled simply needs a half a dozen bobby pins to keep that short 1920s look to it. And now you're done, your 1920s authentic finger wave. Yes, it's time consuming, but very impressive and totally worth it. I hope you enjoyed this video and remember to subscribe to my channel where I upload new hair and beauty videos every Thursday. And don't forget to come on over and visit the blog superkawaiimama.com.au